solve four x cubed minus eight x squared minus eleven x plus fifteen equal to zero. So we want to find solve this. So if it's a cubic equation, you will have three values of x. So yeah, we'll have to do a trial and error method. So we're going to let uh, let x minus one be a factor. Okay, so this is this is by letting x minus b a factor, which implies uh, the remainder should be zero. When you're dividing, the remainder should be zero. When you're dividing by x minus one. Now, how do you find the remainder using the synthetic division? So, first thing is you're going to set this equal to zero. X minus one is equal to zero which implies x is equal to 1. This is not very intuitive, but uh, you'll understand the maths behind it. So I like the synthetic, synthetic division because it tells you the remainder and also the coefficient of the quadratic polynomial in this case. So first write the coefficients of the cubic polynomial, which is 4, negative 8. You've got negative 11 and 15. So you've got all the coefficients. You've got a coefficient of x cubed, x squared, x, and the constant. And you're dividing by 1. So you write a 1 here. And you always start with a 0 here. So write a 0 there. And here you have to add these two numbers. 4 plus 0 is 4. And you multiply these two numbers. 1 times 4 is 4. You multiply these two numbers. Hmm? and write it here. And then you have to add these two numbers. So negative, you're adding these two numbers. So negative 8 minus 8 plus 4 is negative 4. Then again, the same process, you multiply 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. You add these two numbers, which is negative 15. And multiply with these two numbers, which is negative 15 and 0. So 0 means the remainder is 0. When you divided x minus 1, when you divided this polynomial by x minus 1, the remainder is 0. So this implies this equation changes to x minus 1 times 4x squared minus 4x minus 15 is equal to 0. So now you can set this equal to 0 and this equal to 0. So, well, we can say x minus 1 equal to 0. And you can also say 4x squared minus 4x minus 15 is equal to 0. So x is equal to 1. And here we can put this in two brackets. Okay, so well, <clears throat> if it's 4x squared here, yeah? You can only write 2x and 2x. 2x and 2x. So why did I write 2x? Because 2x times 2x gives me 4x squared. Now I want to get minus 15. So how can you get minus 15? So well, I can get minus 15. You can get minus 15 by 5 times negative 3. 5 times negative 3, or 3 times negative 5. So, <clears throat> I want to get two numbers such, so that you also get this negative 4. So, you have to place the number carefully. So, let me put minus 5 here, and plus 3 here. Can you see 3 times negative 5 is minus 15. You should also get, so let me erase this. Now you have to also always check, don't be confident. So this is, this gives you what? This is 3 times 2x is 6x. And 2x times minus 5 is minus 10x. Can you see these two? If this is 6x minus 10x is minus 4x. And that's what you have to check. So you can, you can also check, so 2x times 2x is 4x squared, 
3 times minus 5 is minus 15 and this combination should also give you this middle term. Okay, so let me cancel. So now you can set each of them equal to 0. Well, you can say 2x plus 3 equal to 0 or you can also say 2x minus 5 equal to 0. So adding minus 3 to both sides, you can say 2x is equal to negative 3. And dividing both sides by 2, x is negative 3 over 2, which is minus 1.5. And this is x is equal to, so 2x is equal to 5 by adding 5 to both sides and dividing by 2. So this is 2.5. So three answers, x is equal to 1, it is minus 1.5, and 2.5. You can confirm the answer by using a graphic calculator, or if you put this back in this equation, in place of x, you can put 1, it will be 0, if you put minus 1.5, it will be 0, and if you put 2.5, it will be 0.